Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. So we've seen some of the differences between using pure Node.js in the XS Advanced environment and how XS Classic and XSJS used to work. One of the major differences is um, that we want to explore a little bit more about now is the fact that in the old XSJS we were very much in a sandboxed environment. We were running inside the HANA database, therefore you weren't really allowed access to, to anything outside the JavaScript VM. You couldn't get access to the operating system, the environment, any of these sort of things. It would have been a security risk because we were running in process inside the HANA database. But in the XS Advanced environment, that's simply not the case. We're at the very least running in a separate operating system process from the HANA database. In fact, each individual application that you deploy. Each microservice is running in its own operating system process. So it even it isn't even though you'll have access to other Node.js applications or other XS uh, advanced applications simply because you would have OS level access. But furthermore, you can even install the XS advanced runtime on a completely separate piece of hardware than HANA. Now it's still part of the HANA instance. It's still monitored by the HDB uh, the HDB daemon and, and, and things like that. But just like you can have a multi-node HANA system, you can have separate nodes, separate pieces of hardware where you install the XS Advanced in environment as well. So if you're really concerned about the fact that uh, now programmatically we can have OS level access and, and OS environment level access, um, you know, that, that can help alleviate those, those concerns. Uh, I should also point out that there are options to run in space isolation so that each XS Advanced space also runs under its own operating system level user. And that's another layer of security. Obviously, once we can drop down to the OS, we can impact other other processes. Um, you know, once you're at the OS level at, at Linux, um, you can do some pretty amazing, powerful things. Um, but with that idea of space level separation, you would at least be running a, under a separate operating system level user per space, and you could control access by those means. I will state up front, you know, in the demos that I'm going to do, my particular system does not run under space isolation, and therefore all the uh, Node.js and Java XS Advanced applications are all running under the same OS level user. Um, so you'll see that in the demos, but, but there's a more secure option that you can choose during installation time that you would obviously want to use for a productive system. All right, so let's go back over to our project in the Web IDE. And uh, let's start by looking at uh, the fact that we can get access um, to the environment. Um, and this is kind of important now in the uh, in the XS Advanced world because there's actually a lot of information that's stored at the environment level uh, per application. Uh, so let's uh, let's first let, let, let me grab the code snippet and we'll see what it's doing, and then we'll we'll see the uh, the kind of information that we can get uh, from the environment. Oh, sorry, I forgot my five. And what you're going to see is there's very little coding to this. Uh, it's really access, easy to get access in that um, basically we've got process. That's a built-in uh, Node.js object that's filled by the, by the surrounding runtime itself. And that, that actually is the object that represents the OS level process. And we can simply say process.env. And that's going to bring back the entire OS level environment, so the environment for our process, um, in a JSON format. And then what we're going to do here in our little example is we're just going to stringify it and put it in the response object so we can see it from the web browser. Now, I don't think this is something you'd normally want to be passing back to your users in a web browser, but it allows us to, to have a look at it and study the information in a little more detail. And you'll see some of the things that we might uh, find useful to pull out of here. So let's just uh, let's just restart our service so we pick up this change. And then uh, we'll launch our web module and test this. These two 
And uh, I called this ENV, didn't I? And what you'll see here is there's actually a ton of information. And a lot of this is maybe not that interesting. It's pretty technical. It's environment variables that are being set maybe for just running in the XSA uh, environment. Uh, there's things that uh, the OS level is setting, you know, the path to the Java root, the NPN configuration. You'll see some of this is repeated multiple times in here. The NPM uh, information is obviously set multiple times. Um, there's all kinds of lower level Linux uh, information here that we aren't necessarily going to, to need. Uh, but, you know, maybe I'll point out some things here that are kind of interesting. We have the dir executable path that shows us actually the HANA executable path. So this would, uh, and uh, some of these would only be accessible if we were running on a single um, single piece of hardware, which I am, of course, here, a single node system. My XSA is running on the same system as my HANA database, so I'm seeing some of these HANA database paths and information here. Uh, but uh, as I scroll down through here, um, some of them that are pretty important, the VICAP, VICAP application. Uh, these are the ones that are set, these are part of Cloud Foundry. Cloud Foundry sets these, these VICAP uh, parameters per application. It tells you a lot of the uh, Cloud Foundry or XSA specific information. Um, and this could be useful at runtime. For an instance, from the VICAP application, I can see my application ID. Uh, I can see my application name, uh, the organization, and the space that I'm running inside of. Uh, when it was started, the host name that I'm running on. Um, the application URL that I'm running under, and uh, the controller API. So if I wanted to, say, make a, a call to the XS controller itself, there's a lot of APIs built into it. I wouldn't have to hard code that in my application. I could look it up dynamically from the environment. Uh, likewise, if we scroll down through here, like I said, there's a lot of Linux-level stuff. Um, not all of this is particularly uh, useful. Uh, we do have some system log information, um, uh, but let me just see here. Um, yeah, VICAP services. To go along with VICAP application, VICAP services is the other one that's interesting. This actually tells us all the, um, all the bindings that we have, all the service brokers that are bound. And when you're calling that uh, XS ENV module, and we're giving it um, like a, the tag or the service name, what it's really doing is it's coming out of here and it's reading the same environment information, the VICAP services, and it's parsing this for you and pulling out the information about your UAA service or your HANA uh, database connectivity. But of course, you, you could read the, the environment directly if, if you so want it. Um, I, you know, like I said, I've, I've used this sometimes. Uh, uh, I have some other examples we'll see later where I do call the XS controller APIs. And, and I use this environment information to get access to the URL, so I'm not having to hard code or configure it somewhere. Uh, so that's the that's kind of useful thing that you can get from uh, this environment information as well. Um, let's look at a couple of other things that are useful. A lot of times you might want to know dynamically uh, what org or space that you're running inside of, uh, particularly if you're writing some sort of admin or, or you know, really power user kind of uh, utility, uh, or you want to do something really dynamic, uh, talk to the controller or something like that, something low level. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add two more RESTful services. And what we're seeing here is inside the process ENV, but we don't have to bring the whole thing back. It's JSON already. If we know what we're looking for, uh, we can extract uh, information directly out of there. For instance, I'm going to just go and grab the VICAP information that we saw and put it in a variable. And then from there, I can just grab the organization name or the space name. Uh, and just to prove to you that we're extracting it, we'll, we'll put it in the output here. And we'll rerun this real quick and then we'll test it. So we'll just come here and grab our org on Express. And we'll grab our space. I'm working in the development space. So you see how easy it is to get that information at, at runtime as well. Um, one of the other things I want to show you here is, um, you remember 
back, may, maybe you saw it um, when we did our XSJS, I demonstrated how we could use built-in modules uh, in XSJS, and one of them that we did is we went and we got OS-level information. Of course, that is a, is a Node.js module, this OS, so, you know, it's really uh, made to be used from the operating uh, from from node.js itself so of course we can do the same thing here let's just uh, bring that example in so we'll use the same os level module which gives us uh, you know now we're not just directly interacting with the environment but we've got a module that's designed for interacting with the os here we're just getting information but you know you can go to the online help for uh for Node.js itself, um, provided by the Node.js organization, and look up more information on this OS module. There's all kinds of other cool things that we can do with it. Powerful, dangerous, potentially dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, kinds of things. But uh, uh, but very very cool. I think that uh, we get this low level access here. So let's run this and have a look at it real quick should look just like our XSJS example where we're just returning some of this information. Oh, that helps if I could spell. And we see the same information coming back. We see the tempter, some of the other configuration here, what OS level type and um, uh, release information, load averages, memory, free memory, total memory, and our CPU level information, network interfaces, things like that. So, uh, uh, some useful uh, OS level information. Like I said, there's a whole much, a whole bunch of other stuff that we can do with this, uh, uh, with this little uh, OS level uh, integration here. Uh, but let's see one, uh, one la uh, last example here. This is also really cool and powerful. Um, let me just grab the code and then we'll have a look at it. So the other thing we can do here is, uh, like we got access to the built-in module OS, there's another built-in module that call, that's called child process. And this actually lets us fork another process at the operating system level and then use it to perform operating system level commands. Um, it's pretty wild uh, and if you think about it. But what we're going to do here is we're just going to issue the Linux command, who am I? Pretty, pretty safe, pretty innocuous command. It's going to return uh, our OS level user. And, and what this module allows us to do is not only send commands in the OS, but get to standard out. So basically what it would pipe back to the console will come back in the return. And in this case, we're just going to return it uh, to the client side here. Uh, so let's save that and let's build. So you can imagine you could potentially build OS level scripts and... and um, fork off and do call other executables and things at the OS level. It's uh, pretty, pretty amazing, actually. Uh, so let's just call this one OS user. And what we can see here is I see my SID ADM, HXE ADM. That is the OS uh, level user that my Node.js process is running uh, as at the Linux level. And I just want to, I'm not going to take you through all the code of this last example, um, but I've prepared something just to kind of give you an idea of the power of what you could do with this. Um, so what I've done is I've got another module here, and not another module, another, another route handler. Um, and this is a little more complex and maybe more concepts than what we want to introduce uh, quite yet. Uh, but I'm using this child process to, to fork a process at the OS level. But then what I'm piping in is the XS command line. I'm logging in to the, uh, to the XS command line interface, and then I'm piping commands. Uh, I've got the process, uh, I've got the ability here to pipe commands into it. Um, the other thing that I set up was the HDB SQL. Um, so that you could actually do, um, there's a, a HANA SQL command line as well in Linux, and um, basically brought that in here as well. And uh, of course, we're not going to do this just from a web browser. This is a little more complex. I, I built a little web page. Actually, I took a sample from the internet. Uh, this is a pretty cool little sample that uses uh, jQuery and a custom control to build a little 
OS level terminal. And I'm just going to use the commands coming out of the terminal, pipe them into the OS level via Node.js, and then uh, the response I'm going to send back using uh, WebSockets. Uh, and then uh, it will show up in that control. And like I said, a little more complex maybe than what we want to get into with all the details of how I did this, but just to give you an idea of what's possible with this. Um, the other thing that I'll show you is, you notice I put this index HTML. I was feeling lazy. I didn't want to you know, set up another route and put it in the web module just yet. We're not ready to do more web development there. This is a pretty cool thing uh, that you can do here as well, is that our route handlers inside of Node.js have all been pointing to other Node.js services. But actually, you can just say express static and point it to a folder, and then it will act like a static web server as well. And it's just going to serve out that content. And since I just had a single HTML page, I don't have a whole lot of, I don't need, I didn't actually use SAP U, uh, UI5 or, or any of those other external dependencies. Um, I just want one little simple web page to be served out. Um, I decided just to hook that in as its own handler here inside of Express and let it take care of that. So let's go run that real quick and have a look at, at it. So we'll run the little web page here. And uh, like I said, I didn't create this control. It's got the link here to, to where, the, where the control came from, an attribution to it, jQuery terminal. It's a jQuery um, extended UI element. Um, it's, it's really... I think it's pretty neat. You know, I'm a Windows user, so I'm going to switch it so it looks like it's uh, Windows. I have to put in um, authentication here for my commands to log into the XSA uh, command line, but then I can just issue my XSA commands. For instance, I want to get a list of apps. Um, and the first command that you send in takes a few seconds because it's got to uh, create the process at the OS level and then log in to uh, XS Advance and then issue the command. I have all that kind of doing it almost like in a script there on the on the server side. Uh, but uh, then we see our, our commands and then I actually keep the uh, keep the process open um, and only close it when the WebSocket closes, which is uh, kind of cool as well and efficient. But like I said, we're, we are getting a little into the deep end of the pool and I haven't taught you about web sockets and things like that yet. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. We'll teach you how to build these kinds of things yourself, certainly. But I'd, I'll just show you here what's going on. Like if I do uh, system info, I'm just sending that command into the, uh, into the server side here and you see you know, it's performing the OS level command, taking the standard out, and then we're just piping that back into the response here, uh, sending it back to the client, the, the web browser, and then JavaScript is injecting it into this custom control. And it looks like you're issuing commands from a uh, from a command window and getting the the response back. It even even these hyperlinks really work. I, I'm I can't stress how much I'm impressed by this uh, by this control here. It is uh, it is really very very neat, um, but um, but yeah, I hope that gives you an idea of, of the range of uh, power that we have uh, now that we're not so sandboxed. Of course, keep in mind that comes with a, a great amount of responsibility as well.